What I learned using the McLaren 570S is my daily driver. There it was, sitting in my driveway as I returned home after running out for errands. A bright Curacao blue McLaren 570S, all mine for the next few days. I made my typical first impression walk around. My test car was slathered in all the carbon fiber trim that the vast option sheet had to offer. The retractable roof performs a lovely mechanical tango while whooshing and buzzing its way into a small space just aft of the cabin. It looks just as beautiful with the top down as it does up. The doors open in a sort of dihedral manner, once you figure out where the handles are hidden, in the black space underneath the body color swoosh at the top, and once they are fully erect, it's not terribly difficult to contort yourself inside. My first thought, I could drive this thing every day. And so I did. For the next three days, I would use only the McLaren 570S to get from one place to another. I went to the grocery store, drove to dinner, and made a spur of the moment trip up north from Seattle to Billingham. Here's what I learned. Those dihedral doors look sweet, a prerequisite for any proper supercar. But the way the glass rises from the doors means opening them also opens up the roof section, so there's really no way to keep the rain out when entering. That doesn't matter on beautiful sunny days, but remember, this is my daily driver for the weekend, come rain or shine. The most difficult part of getting cozy is adjusting the seat. The buttons are at the front of the seat, and, best I can tell, there is absolutely no rhyme or reason as to which button moves or controls what surface. It's a 15-minute guessing game of button mashing, praying, cursing, and trying again. It's actually fairly comfortable inside the 570S once you find a correct seating position. You sit low, but not so low that your legs are parallel with the floor. There's ample headroom for a 6-plus footer. Visibility is actually pretty good. I set myself to the task of roving about the cabin, testing switches and buttons, and generally getting familiar with my surroundings. The infotainment system is, for this day and age, rudimentary. But that hardly matters, considering the car's purpose. Let's tip.